Uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Okay, a few words have been said about uh, Iboga, uh, Iboga tree, alkaloid, Ibogaine, and its action on uh, different uh, receptors. Uh, the most known anthropological context of its use is um, initiation into adulthood. It's a kind of rite of passage, which uh, undisputably has its psychosocial or we can say cultural context. But uh, there are unanswered questions uh, whether ibogaine has its effect of uh, physiological, that means biological, material, physical level, and on the other hand as well on a spiritual level, which uh, we already heard a few words yesterday in uh, interesting presentation. So uh, since maturation uh, or acceptance into adulthood, it is a kind of uh, um, uh, it is a kind of uh, transformation. We were focused as a scientist more now in our studies on the physio uh, physiological, physical level of uh, these changes. The question is: Is does the ingestion of ibogaine or iboga has its consequences in uh, uh, prolonged consequences in physiology. It is not hard to understand that uh, acute effects are uh, triggered by, by, by the influence of ibogaine on different receptor sites. But how does what happens that after the ibogaine uh, ritual initiation, somebody can be considered as changed as a person? Or does it has its physiological transformation like maturation as a consequence of uh, uh, sex hor hormones in a pub puberty? So if we first um, uh, uh, explain what epigenetic landscape and epigenetics is, uh, you know, we all, we all grow up from the single cell, which is pluripotent uh, zygota, and later differentiation of cells goes by, uh, by itself, by the diversity in the, in the epigenetic landscape. This is a, a drawing, it's an illustration of a mathematic, a mathematic illustrations of effects, different effects of genes that are in certain moment in time active or inactive in a certain cell. You know that all cells in our body have the same genome, but uh, during the maturation they uh, diverse, they, they differentiate. So you see that you, you, can, uh, you can get a neuron or you can get a muscle cell or you can get a keratinocyte from the single cell. And what differentiates them is the different pattern of gene expression. <clears throat> so to be <clears throat> more maybe illustrative, uh, it's very interesting that a caterpillar and a butterfly is the same organism and it's, it has the same uh, genetic basis and how different they are morphologically and how different they are functionally. One flies, the other doesn't. And so what happens which we, with this process? <clears throat> uh, certain genes can be activated or deactivated with a, with a chemical acetylation or methylation which activates or uh, deactivates certain genes. So in the certain moment of time, certain cell type has a, a certain type of expression, gene expression. Some genes are dormant, some are active. <clears throat> so in, it, it's not happening only in the case of developing in maturation, but also in a kind of genetic memory uh, as a consequence of a presence of a different substances in the body. The most typical way, uh, example for this is, as we, you heard, addiction. Uh, if you take drugs for some time, uh, body adapts, de develops tolerance and adapts uh, biochemically, physiologically to the presence of drugs, which means that the different sets of genes become active and a certain sets of genes became inactive. The change in expression pattern. <clears throat> so we wanted to <clears throat> examine what happens after the ibogaine administration. The methodology <clears throat> is called uh, two-dimensional electrophoresis. <clears throat> because uh, it's an al analysis of proteins in the, ce in the cell uh, which carry the, 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 the functions of the body. Enzymes are proteins, receptors are proteins, different uh, functional uh, molecules are proteins. So <clears throat> we separated this, <clears throat> uh, uh, we took, um, we treated in, in different models, which was yeast, 
and the red, red brain. <clears throat> and we treated the control group and the group uh, uh, with ibogaine. And then we compared the different expressions and tried to find out the changes, what happens after the, 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 um, in, uh, under the influence of the ibogaine. <clears throat> so I won't go into the details because there is no time, but we found that the many enzymes of the energy metabolism of the cells is induced. So the energetic level of the cell becomes more, uh, uh, more, more available, energy becomes more available in the cell. Glycolysis, uh, oxidative phosphorylation, everything is facilitated after ibogaine. <clears throat> uh, with, a, with a deeper insight into the process, why this happens, we measure the ATP. The ATP are, are energy-rich molecules in the body that are fuel, that they fuel our functions. Is it a movement? Is it a thinking? Is it the immunity? Is it the growth, maturation? Everything needs an energy. So energy for uh, ATP in the form, chemical ATP is a, uh, 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 ATP is a chemical form of energy. Yes, thank you very much. So we found out that after, uh, um, uh, uh, soon after the administration of ibogaine, that becomes the, the, to the nivellation of energy, which results in the after effect of, of, uh, of uh, enhanced energy availability, as you see in this uh, illustration of this uh, dynamic equilibrium between the production and consumption of energy. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what is the 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 the, the the importance of, of such findings. If you, if, if you now uh, imagine, if you keep in mind the picture with the butterfly, the transition or puber puberty, maturation, <clears throat> needs energy. And bigger energy availability is in a case of this landscape, epigenetic landscape, acts as a noise enhancer. That means that stimulates certain states to the to, to be able to overcome the threshold, the activation level, as you see in, on this graph, to, be, to, to, to conduct the transformation from one homeostasis into another homeostasis. So here we have, in the same time, two processes. One is <clears throat> acute effect of substances on the receptors, which denivellate certain barriers for transformation, it's a kind of psychedelic insights in a, in, a, in, a, in a psychological manner or in physiological manner in thermodynamical terms. And on the other hand, we have a bigger energy availability which statistically enables, facilitates the transformation from one state to another. And if we are talking about certain, <clears throat> if we are talking about, pardon, oh, pardon. Uh, about addiction as a, as a instable homeostasis, as an immature homeostasis, as a caterpillar a form of person, infant, infant way of thinking of, and accepting a life and responsibility, then such process of accelerated, facilitated transformation can bring change on a, all levels, spiritual, I mean, uh, uh, psycho, psychosocial, let's say, with a uh, psychotherapy, psychotherapy, uh, th therapeutic insights, and besides, with a detoxification of a, a, a body uh, in a form of the uh, biochemical transformation from one homeostasis to another. Because our, our perception of homeostasis as a single right way of living is wrong, is obsolete. We see now that we can function on a different way of of, 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 of living, so-called modus vivendi. We can transform our, our, our uh, beliefs, ethics, that means spiritual level, our, our uh, psychological balance, and besides our biochemical, uh, biochemistry of the body to be on a one on another homeostatic uh, balance, which differ one from another by its energy expenditure. And addiction is a very expensive homeostasis. It's a, it's a weak, bad homeostasis, but it has a problem with the big barriers to overcome, to go down the volley to the more, more thermodynamically stable phases. <clears throat> so what, is the, what does the, the ibogaine do? Uh, there was a question before about the dopaminergic uh, projections. <clears throat> there are articles also about uh, the, the synthesis and liberation of neurotrophins. 
especially uh, GDNF, which helps to renew dopaminergic neurons in the brain, in the dopaminergic projections in the mesolimbic system. So here we have a restoration of the hardware, of the uh, material um, platform for spiritual or psychological well-being. So we see that uh, uh, while ibogaine helps to restore the energy level, besides its uh, hard um, um, uh, neurophysiological restoration of damaged tissue, it, it is considered as a nootropic. This word uh, expresses some substance that helps us to become more aware to, 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 to strengthen our will and to overcome obsession. It is called how a lot of inventor of, of the anti-addiction effect of ibogaine said, uh, ibogaine uh, brings us prevalence of true intention over obsession. So we see that ibogaine works really on all three levels. Energetic, then informational, like psychological, softwareic, I say, and on hardware or physical, which restoration of the neuron circuits. So I would point out here maybe just a statement of Carlos Castaneda that I always liked, that in fact shamanism, or let's say psycho psychedelics and all, all, all this story about this, is not so much about finding out certain um, magic words to, 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 to make a magic or something, but it's a way of living, to learn how to live properly, to save energy in order that we have enough of it uh, to to be capable to cope and understand uh, certain levels of our existence that are not reachable to us when we are exhausted, when we are low on lower levels, where we are full of our addictions, when we are in our immaturate uh, state. Does this make sense? <laughs> <laughs> There's space for one question, if somebody would like to ask complex matters, but in a way, simple. <laughs> right? Okay. Either it did make sense or it didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends maybe on your pre-knowledge. So. Hi, yes, good morning, thanks. I was just wondering if you ever considered using some kind of whole genome sequencing technologies to look deeper and wider at the landscape of DNA methylation or just outright mRNA expression in response to ibogaine treatments? Yeah, that's partially one of the reasons why I'm here. Uh, probably you know that it's a cheap technology uh, and that there is a lot, a big set of genes to to scan and it's very expensive. So this uh, two-dimensional electrophoresis is more like a fishing expedition. When you don't have a hypothesis, you throw a net and you see what you get out. So this is how we got these energy enzymes out. But there is a whole bunch of uh, uh, other enzymes that we didn't have uh, enough of resources to identify. And it, it, need, it needs systematic study to, to make more firm conclusions about what are exactly these shifts in these epigenetic landscapes after ibogaine in the normal conditions, after ibogaine on addicted uh, um, um, uh, models, etc. So uh, definitely I would love to do that, but um, looking forward. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you very thank much. You very much.